So actually many toxic compounds act at cholinergic receptors and they do so um, actually in the peripheral nervous system and they can, they can be, um, you know, quite <laughs> deadly. Um, you know, you've heard probably about botulism. Uh, you know, you have a can of food and it's popped up, you know, that's an anaerobic bacterium that's produced <coughs> some significant, um, you know, toxin um, that could make that food actually quite deadly. And these are uh, botulin uh, botulinum toxins are, are proteins that are produced by these bacteria, uh, bacteria that inhibit the release of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. And if you can imagine, if you can't, you know, um, signal muscles to contract, well, one of the, you know, uh, deadly consequences is you can't move your diaphragm and you can't breathe, right? So you can asphyxiate. So um, apparently, uh, <laughs> botulism toxins are, are extraordinarily potent. Uh, you know, it doesn't take very much uh, to, to sort of kill somebody. Um, and that's, you know, um, uh, something you got to be wary of when you're, you know, opening, you know, old cans of food, right, for example. And then there's black widow spider venom. And this is a fascinating, um, you know, assemblage of proteins that are, in, you know, bitten into you and injected into you. Um, but what um, one of the, the key compounds is this kind of um, open, non-gated calcium channel. So it's a, it's a protein that can embed itself in membranes and it embeds itself you know, in membranes, I'm over here for a second here, sorry, uh, at the axon terminals, right? Um, and it'll embed, uh, you know, open non-gated calcium channels here, which will allow for, of course, the influx of calcium, you know, the uh, fusion, you know, of the vesicles and massive exocytosis, you know, all the uh, acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junctions in the periphery, including at the diaphragm. And these nicotinic receptors, that remember are the ionotropic targets of acetylcholine and of nicotine, um, you know, and, the, and certainly the ionotropic, you know, postsynaptic targets on the muscle, you know, of, you know, acetylcholine released by efferent or motor neurons at the neuromuscular junction to move your diaphragm and to move other parts of your body. Um, they have this, this unique kind of response to overstimulation. Like if there's regular levels of stimulation, you know, they'll swing open a, uh, a hole that will allow for sodium um, and in some cases calcium, depending on the, the specific subtype of uh, a cholinergic receptor, nicotinic cholinergic receptor. Um, so they'll depolarize, right? They'll excite the next cell. They'll excite the muscle cell and promote contraction. Um, however, uh, if they're overstimulated, there's too much stimulation over time, they actually shift into another form, another conformation where they are not responsive. They're no longer responsive to cholinergic binding. So they will not open and depolarize anymore. So there can be this initial intense stiffening, and then there can be no more responsiveness. I mean, they go away for a little bit. They take a break, you know, before whoop, coming back out and, you know, allowing for, you know, transmitter to bind again. So overstimulation of nicotinic cholinergic receptors at the, at the neuromuscular junction can be very dangerous and deadly because it can, it can make the muscle stop listening to the release of acetylcholine. And that can result, um, you know, in, you know, asphyxiation and death, right? And then there's curare, which is um, actually a plant poison uh, that has been used in certain cultures for hunting, you know, animals and things like that. And they would dip arrows into this, you know, plant-derived chemical poison called curare. Um, and curare is an antagonist, right? So it blocks uh, the nicotinic cholinergic receptors on muscle in the periphery. It doesn't even have to cross the blood-brain barrier, right? Um, and it will, uh, you know, basically make the muscles insensitive to the release of uh, acetylcholine. They don't respond because there's an antagonist bound to the nicotinic cholinergic receptor on the muscle, uh, preventing, uh, you know, it from swinging open, you know, channels to sodium and calcium and allowing for depolarization and contraction of the muscle. So um, it can it can kill an animal, right? It can it asphyxiate or it certainly uh, paralyze an animal. Um, so those are some poisons that act peripherally at cholinergic receptors, at cholinergic synapses.